welcome to Harriet Watt University presents Next Gen Education in association with CNBCTV18.com. Now, the glitzy and ultra modern city of Dubai is not just a traveler's dream destination. In recent years, it has also emerged as an education hotspot, especially where Indian students are concerned. In fact, a 2019 PwC report shows that the academic free zones of Dubai have been able to attract international and private universities to set up branches there for the last few years. Now, this means that Indian students who are seeking top quality education have the option to choose Dubai, a place not too far away from home and full of possibilities. To talk about Dubai's potential for offering top great quality education and the growth potential thereon for students who are taking these courses in Dubai, I have with me a very special person, Professor Heather McGregor, the Vice Principal of Harriet Watt University. Uh, let me start by asking you about the university and what the journey has been like. It started at, what, 1821 when you were the first mechanics institute in Scotland and now you present in Malaysia and of course Dubai. What's it been like? Well, uh, of course, I, ha I have to say, even though I'm quite old, I haven't been around for the whole 200 years. <laughs> so um, I can only comment on the history but, uh, of the time I've been there, which is six years. Um, but we were started, you're right, just over 200 years ago uh, as a the first mechanics institute in the world, actually, um, although they subsequently became organizations like us all over the world. Um, and what we started at was a night school because the idea was that people wanted to upskill themselves. And in those days, higher education was for people who could afford to go. Mm. Uh, and working people couldn't afford to study and to better themselves and get better jobs. So the citizens of Edinburgh got together and by public subscription, they organized our institution, which offered classes at night. The first class was in chemistry. Um, it was very affordable. That was another important thing. Um, and 400 people showed up. And actually, I've been to the very room where that chemistry lecture took place. And it must have been very uncomfortable because it's not that big. And, um, and 400 people were that keen to learn about chemistry. So we've always had a tradition of helping people to get upskilled and get better jobs or get good jobs. So, you know, you've come a long way from those night classes, right? Now you're offering degree courses, one year courses, uh, graduation, post graduation, PhD even, right? So for Indian students who are looking to get their education abroad in Dubai, uh, what kind of possibilities does it offer, especially for professional growth? Well, we are essentially a science university with a big business school. So if you've got any kind of interest in science, uh, any kind of engineering, you know, some, some of our engineering students are amongst the best students in the world, things like architectural engineering, civil engineering, um, chemical engineering. We, we are a very big science school, and then we have an extremely large business school. I always try and think of us as the MIT of Scotland, because we're a science university with a very large business school. Um, and for Indian students looking for a UK education, but maybe not so far from home, um, because the UK, after all, is you know much further from uh, uh, from here uh, than Dubai. The great attraction of our university is that we teach exactly the same curriculum in all of our campuses. So if you start in Dubai and you are feeling comfortable and you've enjoyed it, if you want to, you can transfer to Scotland. Um, and at the end, you just get a degree from Harriet Watt. It doesn't say whether you were in Dubai or Scotland or Malaysia. You get a degree from Harriet Watt. You know, but one of the important considerations for students who are looking to go abroad is always the cost factor. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about the affordability uh, when studying in Dubai and does the university offer scholarships for students? So the university does offer scholarships for students. Uh, in particular, we op offer merit scholarships. So the better the grade, the better the price. You know, this is a system that's very heavily used in the United States, of course, and, mm. and, and very familiar, I think, to people who've looked at those universities. So we do offer, and we have, offer a range of scholarships. People would go to our website to see more about that. Uh, but it's not just the affordability, you know, of the fees. You've also got to live in Dubai yes. um, as well. And I know that, uh, especially if you've ever been there on vacation, you probably know that there's some very expensive parts of yeah. Dubai. But there are dedicated student accommodation that mm. is priced accordingly. Um, though we put on a lot of uh, transportation for the students from the metro station and from the student accommodation. So we go out of our way to try and make it as affordable as possible. Okay, so once the affordability is tackled, I think the next thing the students are looking for is what sort of opportunities they will get in terms of placements. Mm. You run uh, you know, campus fairs, recruitment drives. Uh, could you tell us a bit about that? 
So we do all of those things, as does, of course, every university. Yeah. I, I think, first of all, Dubai as a place. One of the other reasons, going back to your affordability question, that people like, is that the, is that the United Arab Emirates as a whole is very welcoming to mm. foreign students and will allow you to work from the beginning. You'll probably be aware that if yeah. you go and study in America or in the UK, yeah. there are restrictions about whether you can work, how many hours you can work. Yeah. Um, if you come to Dubai to study, you could get a job day one if you really wanted to. And it is, I don't encourage a lot of working for money if you're studying a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but a lot of students combine these things, you know, especially with a part-time job. So that makes it more affordable and it also can give you more experience mm. much earlier. And yes, we do career fairs and we have a dedicated careers team uh, and we help people to get placements. And it helps that our campus mm. is right in the middle of Media City um, in Knowledge Park. Um, very near the Palm Jumeirah, if people are, f are familiar with that probably, uh, but in the middle of lots of businesses. So it's a very good location to reach out to employers. That, that's great to know it's in the middle of, uh, you know, this hot spot for business. But have you tied up with some of the companies there, some enterprises there to ensure that there are placements for your students? Uh, a bit about that as well. Yes, yeah, so we work uh, very closely with lots of employers, okay. uh, both local employers, but also international employers. Mm. Uh, a lot of big international companies, you know, have their uh, have their uh, head, head, uh, head well, their or regional, branches, rather. They usually yeah, have their yeah. regional office somewhere yeah. in there because it's so easy to get yeah. to and from uh, Dubai. So people quite often run yeah. the region out of Dubai. Um, so we have teamed up a lot with uh, with local employers um, and international employers. Um, some of these are companies with thousands of people. Some of them are companies with hundreds of people. Uh, we also have launched um, an incubator in, okay. in the campus mm -hmm. so that if our students want to start their own business, which, by the way, a lot of them do. They get mm -hmm. to Dubai and they see all of these opportunities and they want to start their own business. Um, okay, uh, that's encouraging to know that perhaps a lot of uh, students want to start up their own businesses there. Uh, but given that we're talking about displacements, uh, also it would be great if you could elaborate what kind of professional or industry ready courses do you offer? Because at the end of the day, uh, the idea of going to a university is, is to acquire the skill that you need in your job, not just academic training. Mm -hmm. It's interesting here, you know, during my visit to Mumbai, we mm. have had a panel of employers actually here um, in India, the biggest employers in India, talking about what they're looking for in students. And yes, they want mm. all these technical skills, but they also very carefully explained to me that they want um, the softer skills as well. So they want, yes, they want students who are great engineers, but they also want them who people who can communicate they're looking for empathy mm. they test uh, a resilience that all of these things that it's very difficult to get any kind of mark or grade in resilience yeah. so um, all-rounded growth oh yes exactly but they, they do employers are really fussy these days they t when, when they <laughs> when they employ you as a graduate they test you you know you do all sorts of psychometric testing yeah you also have to do self filmed video interviews frequently because so many people apply that they don't necessarily see them all in yeah. person yeah. so we, we try and prepare our students for all of these things so yes we offer some very technical courses so hmm. for instance in Dubai we teach architecture this is a a course that is accredited by the Royal Institute of British Architecture. Separately, we teach architectural engineering. Mm. This is an incredibly technical, uh, but really well uh, developed course that will mean that you know how to devise it, all of the air conditioning in the building. Or whether very water, specialized. Very specialized. <laughs> but you know what? We are so famous for this that our students who graduate from architectural engineering can almost name their price as they leave the building <laughs> because there are so many people yeah. coming to employ them and it's not yeah. that big a class. Um, and then we, uh, we have um, computer science. Uh, computer science is very popular, particularly amongst Indian students, mm. because a lot um, of students in India are very well taught in maths and mathematics. So that they want to do, they want to code, they, they want to get ready. Data science. So data is the new oil. Yes. Um, and we we really do a lot around data science, data analytics. Mm. Um, and then, of course, business. Mm. I think people are really keen to understand the full remit of business from, uh, from marketing and people management to finance, mm. 
so we also about half the students yeah. that we have are studying some kind of business or so business that's related the most popular course. course there, at it, the it is the most popular area. There's lots of mm. courses within that. Yeah. But yes, it's the most popular area. Uh, you know, another thing that really excites students going to universities is the uh, idea of have uh, you know exchange programs. You mentioned that if you're comfortable with Dubai and if you want to go to UK, that is an option. But have you tied up with the universities to offer those kind of opportunities to students mm. who are going there? Well, again, this inter inter university intra university travel, first of all, hmm. is the biggest, most popular thing that our students do. As I explained, you know, there are ten thousand universities in the world, hmm. and we are the only one to have a completely identical syllabus in every place that we operate yeah. and to allow students free transfer hmm. between each one. And we will even subsidize their um, their costs. We, okay. give a, we give a small grant to every student in one place that wants to travel to another place. So we have a very good and strong campus in Malaysia as well. Mm. So students from Malaysia come to Dubai and Scotland students in Scotland go to Malaysia and Dubai um, and, um, and so forth. But this is obviously we also do degrees with a year abroad, we call it, where people can go to other universities in Canada, Australia, mm. America, Europe. And yes, of course, we, we do those. It, we wouldn't be competitive yeah. if, if we didn't. But it's interesting. We have more people doing the intra-university uh, arrangements. So people are opting to go to Malaysia or yes, to the UK. Yes, they are. They opt to go to the Malaysia maybe for one semester or oh. two semesters or to the UK. Hmm. I, it, I think it very much depends on, on where people are curious to study. <laughs> and I, they don't have to go forever they, they would go yeah, for maybe a semester or so, a semester or so yeah. and then they come back again hmm. sometimes though, i find that for instance my students in scotland go to malaysia and find how cheap it is to live there yeah um and then they're very happy staying there until they graduate yeah and as i explained if you saw the the degree certificate yeah. of a harriet watt student you hmm. wouldn't know where they studied because we just tell them they're a harriet watt graduate and that's irrespective a, of the location. Irrespective of the location. That's a global guarantee of quality. How do you help students acclimatize in Dubai? Uh, whether it is social, cultural, environmental, how does the university help students that are moving to a new country to study? Well, we give them a lot of help. I mean, the first and obvious piece of help is with their visa. Hmm. Uh, and so we have a whole team of people doing nothing but helping people with visas. I would say for Indian students that it is an easier cultural transition hmm. from anybody else, which is probably why they make up our biggest group of students. Hmm. Um, the, there are so many Indian nationals already living in Dubai. Some of them have been there for, you know, literally you know, 20, 30, 40 years in hmm. some cases. Yeah. Um, in fact, the, the whole secondary school education system hmm. in Dubai yeah. uh, was developed uh, by Indian nationals and uh, they brought some of the best practices of India. Hmm. to Dubai for secondary schools. That's why we have such good secondary schools now in, in Dubai. Uh, and the, the cultural transition might be easy, but there are some different rules. You know, we have yeah. different rules around alcohol. Yeah. We have uh, different rules about uh, personal space, hmm. these kind of things. So what we do is for the students that have joined us from overseas, irrespective of their nationality. Hmm. We, we do a separate induction and a climatized program at the beginning. And they also live in student accommodation, where, whereas our students who have joined us locally yeah. uh, will probably live at home and, hmm. um, and commute in every day. Well, that's certainly helpful. But uh, you know, for someone who's looking at opportunities at Harriet Watt, um, not able to travel to Dubai to see the campus personally or get information, where can they do that? Well, they can do that at our um, at our website, at the mm -hmm. Harriet Watt website. Um, but also, we have you know we have a very approachable team um, in Dubai. Well, indeed, in all of our campuses. Uh, and as I said, we are one university, so mm -hmm. the team in Dubai will also help you if you're thinking about Scotland um, or, or you're thinking about Malaysia. Uh, but you can absolutely it's all on the website, um, and you can get more details. And you know, if all <coughs> fails. 
you can also even reach me. My email address must be the most available one <laughs> in the world. It's on the website. You can easily find me. And you even able to answer all of the million queries that come in? Well, I'm very fortunate <laughs> I have a good staff, but I like to take these things personally. You know, this uh -huh. is a, I personally lead this, this organization in, in Dubai. I'm very proud to do that. And I like to try and help as many students and parents as possible. I think, uh, Professor McGregor, before we wrap up, this is one thing that would really help students decide is proof of the pudding is really in how the alumni are placed, how they're doing. Tell us about some of the stories about where your alumni are currently, how they're doing and how the college has helped them shaped, uh, shape into the people that they are today. So we have about 150,000 alumni around the world, as, as you can imagine, you know, we're, we're a very big organization. And as I also explained, we're very strong in engineering. So a lot of our students are running oil and gas companies who have got very senior uh, positions in um, construction companies or uh, logistics companies. We've got a whole range of, um, uh, of scientists out there, a lot of people working on energy transition and saving the planet, you know, people who are developing the next stage of carbon capture or hydrogen. Mm. But I think a couple of, uh, of things that it's worth uh, knowing about us is recently, um, in the last year, someone did an analysis of 8 million records on LinkedIn oh. to see which universities in the UK produce the most CEOs. Yeah. Um, and we were the number one university in Scotland. Mm. So Scotland has a lot of universities, 16 yeah. universities. We were the number one university in Scotland for producing CEOs. And the other interesting statistic that was published just last month was that somebody else did another analysis on LinkedIn of where did everybody come from in the big four accounting firms um, and which universities had produced all the people in Ernst & Young and Pricewaterhouse and so on. And we were the number one university in Scotland again. And that that is very surprising. That was more surprising to me than the CEOs mm. because we are not the biggest. You know, there are some enormous universities, and some really big universities in Scotland. And yet we had produced more people working in the big four firms than any other university in Scotland, and 10th in the UK, more than Manchester, more than Imperial, you know. Mm. So I think if you're looking for any kind of professional career in science or science-related activity, or any business and finance-related career, then we're a good place to start because that's where our students end up. But what would you say sets apart Harriet Watt from the other universities? Why should students go there as opposed to, you know, the hundreds and thousands of other universities elsewhere? I think because we have such a strong reputation in science and so on, especially in research, we're a top quartile UK research university. We punch way above our weight in science research. We're the UK's headquarters for robotics research. We have the National Robotarium uh, situated on our campus, which, uh, which recently opened. We, we have leading researchers in artificial intelligence, Mathematics, we're the a European Centre of Excellence for Actuaries and Actuarial Mathematics. Um, it, and then on the business side, you know, we have a very long tradition. We have the longest uh, operating distance learning MBA in the world, which has been uh, studied by prime ministers and, uh, uh, you know, all, all sorts of people. There's a lot of, for instance, a lot of doctors and dentists come and study with us when they've qualified and they want to run their own business and their own practice and they come and study business with us. So I, I think that if you're passionate or interested in science or business, as I said, we are the MIT of Scotland. Yeah. Um, and if those are your areas of study, mm. then I think to link with our, univer our university's name with yours will be something that you have on your personal CV and your personal balance sheet mm. for the rest of your life. Well, if I may add a couple more questions, but uh, you know, students who end up going to Harriet Watt in Dubai specifically, um, are they able to get placements within Dubai? I know you said that compared to UK and other countries where it's harder to get a visa to continue working, Dubai is a lot easier. But uh, is that what you usually see or do students end up going outside? Do they return home? Uh, you know, where do the placements usually there's, end up There's happening? a very good balance actually between people that stay and people that return home. I, I think families are very <laughs> influential. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're very influential in this. Um, as I said, I, I, Indian students uh, make up almost half of our students in Dubai. Yeah. 
but of those Indian students, uh, two thirds of them have uh, are from Dubai in the first place. Yeah. So the real question is, what about the one third that are coming from India? You know, yeah. what's happening to them? Mm. And I would say half of them go back, mm. half of them stay there. And if I was to ask each individual one, why did you choose to go back or why did you choose to stay there? Yeah. Their family will have had a big influence. A lot of them come from families who've got their own businesses, you know, mm. in India. And they want the, they want their children to come back and work in the family business. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a lot of them end up coming home, but there are opportunities in Dubai. If there are opportunities. Want. The other thing is people come to Dubai to recruit from many other parts of the world. Mm. So it's not just a question of stay in Dubai or come back to India. It's stay mm. in Dubai go back to India or go and work somewhere completely different in the UK or the USA. You will, after all, if you come and study with us in Dubai, you leave with a mm. UK degree, with yeah. a UK degree in yeah. computer science, say, yeah. or a UK degree in business. Those kind of qualifications are looked for by people all over the world. And, and finally, you know, for sort of an assurance to students, what's your success placement, uh, success rate in placements like? Well, it, it is actually very high. I think the key thing in placement, certainly in our UK campus, the key thing in placement has been around people's English, funnily enough, not the quality of their grades, because actually, by the time you get to our university, you, you're, you're doing pretty well anyway, and you're, no one thinks they're going to get a substandard person from Harriet Watt, you know, they know yeah. that that's it. I think it's, in, it's important for people to keep practicing their, in using their English all the mm. time, mm. and the better that they are able to communicate. We go back to what I said earlier about communication skills. Yeah. I think the easier it, it, it is for, mm. for them to get an, the, the success of, at the moment, you know, everybody has vacancies. Mm. So actually, it's not difficult to get a good level of placement because mm. everybody wants talent. Yeah. Um, and where students sometimes find it a bit harder, as I said, is if they haven't used a lot of English. So communication skills are very yes. important to secure yes. a placement, of course. Yes. Professor McGregor, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. On that note, we'll wrap up this very special discussion. Thanks for watching.